Let's take a walk where dinosaurs once roamed. Nah, no, just kidding. Let's look at the Fossil Footprint Nebula. Welcome to SETI Astro. So I never really had the, the, the major intention of shooting this object, but it kind of crept into my target list and uh, I acquired quite a bit of data on it. I have 64 15 minute exposures in hydrogen and then 32 each of sulfur and oxygen. So definitely not uh, a deep amount of data, but, but a modest amount here. Uh, for the, the hydrogen, I was really surprised at how bright the core was in this. Um, surprised not a lot more people are shooting this particular object since it, since it is pretty bright actually. Um, so it's definitely worth using some HDR techniques to, to tone down the core. Removing the stars and stretching the hydrogen, you could really see just how much there is in here and how bright that center core is. So using uh, HDR multi-scale transformation, I was able to really tone it down and really start seeing that structure in there. So if you are going to shoot the fossil footprint nebula, be sure to employ some kind of HDR techniques, uh, whether in PixInsight or, or wherever else you're processing it. You could even see these really cool streaks coming out of the core too. Just a lot of structure in there for hydrogen. The oxygen, it's really localized deep in the core there. Uh, there is some other oxygen nebulosity in, throughout it, but it, it really is centered around that, that core spot where that really massive star is ionizing the oxygen. And then removing the stars and, and stretching it, uh, there is quite a bit of diffuse oxygen through it. And applying a little HDR as well on it, you can see a lot more structure and contrast. So even the oxygen is gonna benefit from some uh, HDR techniques. The sulfur, on the other hand, was very interesting. Uh, there's very little sulfur in here. There, there is some neb nebulosity from the sulfur, which, which is nice to see. But near the core, it really is just these sharp contrasted lines of these interface areas of the gases that are ionizing the sulfur. So that's really interesting. It's gonna add a lot of detail, almost like enhancement to your, to your image. And then removing the stars and stretching it, no HDR needed here, but you could really see just how like sharp and crisp these lines are in sulfur. I, I hadn't seen anything like that yet in sulfur, so uh, really interesting. I think at this point you guys know me and not not one to try to figure out what palette I'm going to use very easily. So I, I made a bunch. Um, I have some where I used the HDR images, some where I didn't. So here's HOO without HDR. Here's HOO with HDR. Here's just an SHO with HDR. So much green since the, the hydrogen was so pronounced through the whole thing. And then oxygen was really localized down to this area. And then sulfur was just these contrast sharp edges. Uh, so SHO for me wasn't, uh, wasn't gonna be a winner. Here's another HOO palette with uh, a different amount of HDR on the various hydrogen and oxygen channels. And then for 4X, which normally I'm a big fan of, it just, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling that either. So with that, I decided to go ahead and use the HOO image. And then I was going to add the sulfur to it. Uh, since the sulfur was just the contour lines, I figured it was a great opportunity to use what uh, Adam Block has been putting out. At, you know, Colin, people have been saying it's it's his method. It, it's not. It's been, it's been around for quite some time, just assigning yellow to sulfur and adding it to your image. Even in Jurgen's toolbox under the narrowband hue combination, that's the, the default is set red for hydrogen, blue for your oxygen, and then um, an orangey color for your sulfur. So it's it's definitely not a new method, uh, but I thought it would be a, a great opportunity to use it on this particular image as well. So this was my starless HOO, and here was my colorized sulfur data. 
And then I just, uh, I just screened the two together. Which gave me this image. You could tell right away that all those sulfur contour lines really do highlight these gas mountains and columns in the background and then this structure of this this floating area here so now it's just a matter of you know improving contrast and and getting rid of some blemishes and and you know basic processing and that left me with my final starless image uh, we have all this dark nebulosity in here the, the, the center bright structure I was able to keep from blowing out. I did darken the, the background quite a bit as there was just some low contrast diffuseness throughout that whole area. For the stars, I used my narrow band to RGB star combination script. And then finally combining them all together for my final fossil footprint nebula. Not sure why it's called the fossil footprint. This nebula is only roughly 10,000 light years away. So, you know, humans were well, well developing plenty of stuff in 8,000 BC. I don't think, uh, I don't think there were any dinosaurs roaming the earth at that time. I've updated Astrobin with my fossil footprint nebula. I have both the starry and starless versions. I have all my acquisition details here. A little write-up. And then there were a couple uh, nice one-offs in here. There was a, what I thought was, should have been a designated nebula in there. I don't know what it is. It doesn't have a designation, but the star that's powering it right there is a long period variable star. So maybe that has something to do with that emission. There is a large column right near the core, which is a radio source, which I think is really cool. And I, I'm wondering if it has to do something with the strong ultraviolet that that center star bd plus 50 886 is actually given off and causing all this commotion if that's not what's causing you know radio emissions from that particular spot of the nebula as well and then there was just a a cool little other emission object off to the off to the left too so there are some nice little gems throughout the image to to look at I've also updated my website, SetiAstro.com, with the Fossil Footprint Nebula. I do have the most zoomable images. You can click and download the full uh, resolution images as well. If you've stuck in my video this long, you're going to get a little treat here. Uh, just to show you what I've been working on as well. Uh, I'm trying to develop a SETI Astro's editing suite of taking all the scripts I have in PixInsight and porting them into a program that everybody could use if you don't have PixInsight. So I have Statistical Stretch, Narrowband to RGB Stars, Star Stretch, and Halo Be Gone. It's gonna function very similar to you know my, my other standalone items. You could load in images. In this case, you could perform the stretch, save the stretch. I have the all, all the normal statistical stretch stuff in there. For narrow band to RGB stars, you can go ahead and load up your linear H alpha stars, oxygen stars, optionally the sulfur stars. You can preview the combined image. So now here's your narrow band to RGB stars. I do have a slider if you want to adjust the stretch or even the uh, color blend ratio. I have my star stretch script in here so that was the, the the great way of stretching your linear stars once you've extracted them out of your linear image and then i also have halo be gone so there's various uh reduction amounts you could apply and you could see it it uh reduces the halos around those stars This is still, it's not even in the beta yet. That'll be coming out soon for channel members. So if you want to become a channel member and uh, play around with these new programs and scripts as I get them developed, we'd love to have you. Please comment, like, and subscribe.